Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Gravel Gladiator. We have four versions available. We have the base, Road Sport, Lance Head, and Lux. As always, though, we're going to start with the base version of the vehicle and work our way up from there. And the base does have the nicest color as far as I'm concerned. It's one of those colors you don't see on modern cars anymore, but it fits this vehicle very, very well, if you ask me. So here's just a quick look at the outside of this vehicle. And one thing I got to point out, this front right here, that is a very iconic look. Whenever I see that, I just instantly think Dodge Coronet. And that has to be the inspiration for this vehicle because there are a lot of other small details that are very similar to that vehicle. So let's go ahead and do some driving with this thing. And kind of funnily, the most fun way to drive this thing is basically drift it around every single corner. The handling feels right though. It's a big American car from the 70s, so it doesn't handle that good, but it has a surprisingly long wheelbase for a two-door vehicle, which means it's surprisingly stable when we slide around the corners. Like you can really make this into a pretty good drift car if you wanted to. It just needs a little bit more power and it'd be pretty much perfect as far as I'm concerned for drifting. Yet you never see any Dodge Coronets drifting or gravel gladiators as it's called in the game. So anyways, I think that's enough of going around all the corners. Let's go ahead and crash this thing one time. We're on the trolley tracks and we're going to go all the way on them until we get to where the trolleys park. And they're going about 70 miles per hour on impact if I can keep it straight. I'm going to get a little bit of slow-mo here as my hubcaps fly everywhere. There we go. Got the camera there just in time so you can see the impact. And then taking a look at the damage here. It's kind of hard to see anything because it's shoved in the corner, but it looks pretty reasonable overall. So let's go ahead and reset it. Before we do any more crashing though, I want to take a look at the inside of this thing. So we'll go ahead and pop into here. You can see what it looks like. We got lots of chrome all around the driver's area. And then a little bit less chrome over by the passengers, but you still got some on the door. And then into the rear, you got a very similar door back there. And then a long old bench seat over there. Nice texturing on all of the cloth and stuff in here. Also, you got all the functionality you like to see on the interior. So you got a working steering wheel, working pedals, working gauges. When you turn on the lights, the lights light up on the gauges and the gauges man they're really retro they're just a bunch of circles plastered onto the dash basically also when you put the blinkers on the lever on the stock moves and then you got the lights telling you your blinker is on when you hit the parking brake you gotta light the lights up telling you your parking brake is on very very nice in here let's go ahead and do a crash from the inside so you can see what that looks like we're just gonna go at about well maybe go up to almost 100 miles per hour by the time we get to the end of this because we got that downhill helping us it's getting close. It's about 80 miles per hour. We'll do a uh, 16 times slow right here and then watch the impact. You smash your head right into the steering wheel. And unfortunately, this is an older car. You got no airbags. So you just go smash into there. And it's a little bit hard to tell exactly what's going on here. So let's just go ahead and disconnect the camera. And you can see a lot of structural damage to that thing from that impact. It's an older car after all. It's not going to be nearly as safe as a modern car. And we'll go ahead and speed things up. And oh, look at that. The pedals are still working. Ha, they're just moving on their own. Yep. I'm not touching nothing. That's just from like the car decelerating or something. That was funny. Anyways, we'll go ahead and reset this thing. We'll bring the car back up here one more time, but I don't want to stick around here. So we're going to go ahead and get away from here before we do any crashing. I'm just going to drive up along this road until it dead ends, which isn't that far. You can see there's some construction right up there. That's where it dead ends. We'll try to slam the side of the car into that to get some damage to the side so you can see what that looks like. Got eight times slow-mo right there. Perfect side impact right there. The whole side of the car got hit, so it didn't actually do too much damage because it was dispersed over such a large area. Emphasis on large because this is a large vehicle for being just a two-door vehicle at least. And it still drives right now. We got a little bit of a wobble in the rear wheel, but it's drivable. That's what's important. Although it might not be after this impact. Let's see what happens. Right into the stairs. Fender fell off. Door fell off. But we still got some drivability. We just got to get a little bit of traction going. And I think we'll be okay. As we crash into some dude's house. And then just leave this huge massive cloud of smoke behind. Alright this thing is barely driving though. I can't really steer it. So we're just going to let it go wherever it wants to go. Which is right into that pole. Alright so we'll take a look at the damage here. Really bent up the front hard there. You can see how much those front wheels are lifted up. Not quite as bad on this side, though. And like I said, I don't want to go to that old spot. So we're just going to teleport it up the hill a little bit. And then can we drive? Got to get out of the curb first. And we are good to go. Full speed ahead. We should be able to go up to 80 miles per hour about, it looks like. Oh, didn't expect all that airtime, though. 
Can only about 70 miles per hour and then fly. Smash that roof in. And can you still drive? I would think so, right? Yep, we can still drive. So how about we hop our way into the sewers and drive through there? Uh oh. Oh no! <laughs> how do you manage that? This thing is just so long. Got it so stuck. I know I can keep driving though if we just yank it along a little bit. So we'll just. Whoa, uh, 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 oh no. Who put my no grabber at 100% strength? That is not the strength that it's supposed to be at. I'm going to use it anyways because it's already at that, but we're making it lower for next time. There we go. Now, can you still drive after that? The answer is still yes, it can. Barely. It's pulling really hard. I'm just struggling to keep it going in a straight line here, to be honest with you. Especially with the fact that it almost always has wheel spin the way I drive this thing, so I'm always flooring it. Because you always feel like, man, I'm not going that fast. I should floor it. But the reason you're not going fast is because you got so much wheel spin, so you just make things worse. I imagine to keep it straight long enough to do this jump, though. Get that slow-mo going. Doesn't it do an automatic camera angle for this? I guess maybe not if you have slow-mo. And we're actually going pretty far with this thing. We're not going to quite make it to the road, but we're going to be close to it, aren't we? Yeah, we're close, but not quite. Very close. We ended up under the road. And this car, it, well, it's... It's on fire, even though it's underwater. I don't understand it either. How did it catch on fire while it's underwater? How's the engine revving while it's underwater? These are very good questions, which I have no answer for. Is the water just glitching out or is something uh, crazy happening with the car? Let's see. We go on the water again. This time the engine floods just as you would expect. Maybe it's the water under the road isn't actually real water? Like, I'm actually kind of curious what in the world was going on with this thing right there. Uh, it still floods there, so I'm just going to assume some sort of temporary water glitch. That does happen every now and then, but I've never had it happen on a stock map before. Anyways, let's go ahead and swap this out for a different version of the vehicle. We're going to go with the Lux model now, which truly is just... And with the Lux, we got a lot of extra chrome, so I want to make sure we're in the sun so the chrome is glistening. So in the front, we have an extra piece of chrome down on the bottom. On the side, we have an extra piece of chrome on both the front and rear wheel wells. Then we also have this extra piece of chrome right there. And then on the rear, we got a big piece of chrome that says gravel on it, which was not present on the other one. And I'll show you the other one for a comparison. You'll notice just how plain it looks. Like It doesn't look bad at first, but then you see the looks and you're like, wow, that really does look kind of plain and boring. And you same with the side. It's like, well, that actually does look plain and boring without the Chrome. It needs the chrome. It looks so nice with the chrome. Although the vinyl roof, I could take it or leave it. That's one of those looks that I've never really cared for that much. One non-chrome addition of the Lux, though, is it has a right mirror. The other one over there, it just doesn't have a right mirror at all. You only have one on the left side of the vehicle. And lastly, this one has white wall tires, which we're not on the other one. The other one just has blank tires. And for this vehicle, even though it's a little bit on the older side, I think I prefer it without the white walls. A lot of the time, the older the vehicle is, the more I like white walls with it. This one's from the 70s. I guess that's not quite old enough for me to like white walls on it, though. Anyways, here's another crash. And we'll go ahead and see what that did. It immobilized the car completely. We only got a little bit of damage on the rear, a little bit of damage on both the left and right side. And ooh, look at that. I really lowered this thing. That actually looks really nice in terms of height. Like, that's excellent looking. At this point in time, we've done two front impacts and two side impacts, but we've done zero rear impacts. Now, there's two different ways you can do rear impacts. One of them is trying to slide the vehicle into a wall or just maybe even backing it into the wall. But the easier method is simply driving one car into another one. So we're just going to drive this into the yellow car that's parked, and we're going to hit it right in the rear, and that'll be the rear impact. We're going to go to about 60 miles per hour. That's a pretty good speed on it. Eight times slow-mo. All right. That was a pretty good hit in terms of angle. This thing is going to slam into the wall just a little bit, but it shouldn't be too much. Oh, it did get itself stuck, though. You can take a look at the damage back here anyways. Got nice crumpling on the rear. And how did the front compare? Well, it's a little bit hard to tell because I might have slammed into something else. How in the world did it actually end up like that? They're both pointed in the exact same direction, both of which were the different direction than they were before. That is weird. I don't know how I managed that. Anyways, reset, reset, and let's see how much damage we do just backing into something at like 30 miles per hour because it doesn't get as much damage, but it is a little bit more consistent in terms of seeing stuff. So, bam. Now that did 
more damage than the other one because I actually saw some movement from the cabin of the vehicle and the door doesn't even shut anymore because it got so disfigured. It definitely makes it look like a different vehicle when the trunk is so much shorter. It does not look good, but it looks different. Like over here, it's still a little bit longer and it still looks pretty nice. When you have that short trunk, it's just, it looks wrong. You have such a long overhang on the front, you gotta have that long overhang on the rear too. Oh, now it looks really bad. This one is short on the front, long on the rear. And then if you look at it from this way, it's long on the front, short on the rear. This looks awful. I'm crashing this in the ugliest way possible. Come on. Okay, now we're shorter in the same spot in the rear. Like, I'm not paying attention to where I'm crashing it. I'm just crashing it, and that's just what happens to happen. And it looks like we're stuck on that tree, unfortunately. It's just trying to eat my... Well, I don't know what it's really getting stuck on. Maybe just a piece of the trunk? Weird. Because I'm making a skid mark, so obviously it's doing something. Let's see. Can we pull it off of here? Is it stuck stuck? It is stuck stuck. Like, oh, there we go. Whoa. All right. Keep on driving then. We're going to try to make this thing look better by crashing it some more. Yeah, we can get up to speed still. That's good. All right, into this at about 40 miles per hour. Does that make it look any better? No, because we actually didn't crash the front. We just bottomed it out. And that makes it really difficult to drive now. Probably not going to accelerate too well at all, is it? No, we're just making the smoke screen, really. Although I love the way the suspension looks here. Like, the front is lowered, the rear is jacked up. Everything about this car is just destructing itself in the ugliest way possible. I don't know what's up with that. All right, since we can't drive it anymore, though, we'll just go and reset it. And then we'll take another upgrade on this thing. So we're going to go with the Road Sport. So the Road Sport is kind of like the Lux with some extra upgrades. It has a larger air cleaner on the engine, which we haven't actually looked at much at all. So rip that hood off. And then on the regular Lux over here, we'll... Also rip the hood off and you can see this engine it looks sad and wimpy this one has a big air cleaner which really doesn't increase horsepower probably that much at all but look how much nicer it looks there's a nice orange color this one's boring and gray so in addition to that well i gotta put the hood back on because it has a different hood this one has a real nice double intake on the hood this one's just it's a hood although these cars really do have strange looking hood shapes the way it's just like flat right in the front it doesn't go into like a smooth transition it says no it's flat this is the end of the car that's all the hood we need same with this one it just looks a little bit less like that because you see these scoops instead of that fact also on the front you got the letters rs right there you got this red outline on the lights which makes it look a lot more aggressive I mean, you look at the lights they look very aggressive this one's just there's iconic shaped lights but not aggressively looking lights and then we have the rs badge right here with a different shape on that which increases the size of it it actually sticks out a little bit more on the rear it also says rs and then we have a stripe right there which again very similar to the one that dodge would use on their performance vehicles coincidence i think not and lastly we got different rear tail lights this one has three separate lights where this one's more of a strip of lights it looks like maybe it's like a yearly revision because it would seem weird to have upgraded tail lights on the sportier version of the vehicle but in terms of driving, it doesn't feel that much different. I guess it has different wheels that makes it handle a bit better, but it's still a vehicle that handles pretty sloppily as we just barely stay on the road right there. And it feels more well suited for sliding around corners than trying to grip around them. So how about another crash right there? And it just popped the wheel right off. Got some good damage to the front fender we haven't really seen. And we are actually pretty much immobilized right now. So we'll go ahead and have to reset this. I want to do a comparison now. I want to spawn up a Barstow and I want to crash the Barstow directly into the Gladiator and I want to see how they compare in terms of damage because they are similar vehicles. They're both American sedan with four seats. So you would think if you were to crash them into each other, they should deform pretty close to the same or at least be very comparable between the two. I think there might be a couple of year difference between them, but it's not a lot. All right, this one's already damaged though, so we want to make sure it's a fair comparison. We'll reset it. Make sure it's nice, fresh, and shiny. Then we'll go full speed at the Gladiator. Probably going to reach about 70 miles per hour before impact. And there we go. 68 miles per hour. Come to a stop before we crash anything else. And then let's see how they compare. Looking over here. Got a little bit more damage on the bar still. How about this side? This side looks about equal. I think it's just we hit them at a little bit of an angle. So it makes that side look less damaged than it actually is. So to really get a look at this, we'll go ahead and move the bar still out the way. And now that we can see it like this, yeah, you can see it's definitely asymmetrical from the damage we got right there. If you look at it from just this angle, it looks much better. 
So I'd say that worked well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the final version of the vehicle that's available to us, which is called the Lance Head. So this one is more of an upgraded base model. So by that, it doesn't have all the extra chrome that the Lux has, but it does have some performance benefits. It has the same larger air cleaner. It has a different hood than the other one, and it just has a V8 badge right here. It still has the inside strip right here, but it's not red, so it doesn't look nearly as menacing as the other one. It has a different set of wheels once again, and then it has a spoiler on the rear. Give it a little bit more downforce in the corners, maybe. So let's go ahead and drive this thing around a little bit, do a couple of crashes with it. Maybe it'll just crash right into that bar store for crashing into me earlier. How dare you? And he got wrecked compared to me that time because he got smashed into the wall. I used him as an extended crumple zone. It looks like we actually still got a surprising amount of drivability after that impact. Radiators leaking all over the place, creating a smoke screen, but we're driving mostly straight. Just a small pull to the left side. How about a near 100 mile per hour impact right into this wall? That's going to kill the car. It says engine broken right there. Can't do nothing, even if the engine wasn't broken, though, because we're basically wheels up in the air. A little bit hard to see anything, though, because there's a tree in the way. So I'm going to just try to yank it over here so we can take a look at the damage better. There we are. Fender came off. Yeah, there's absolutely no way this thing be able to drive because the engine is actually being crashed into right there. I want to do a little bit more driving with this thing before we finish with the classics. And you should already know what the classics are. But if you don't, that is Brutal Slope and Leap of Death. So how about we do some climbing of the hills and see how fast we can actually go up these things. We're going to floor it and just see what kind of speed we can get up to. And then after this, if I'm not mistaken, we should be able to get to the highway and see how fast it can go on a flatter surface. So going up the hill, it's not doing too bad. It's getting up to 80 miles per hour and it's getting close to about stopping at 80 miles per hour in terms of acceleration. Like the bouncing and stuff slowing it down some more than the slope, I would say, in that situation. Now we got a little bit of a downhill. We can go over 100 miles per hour just temporarily. And we're not going to be going much faster than that, actually, because this thing only has a four-speed transmission. So that was top gear. This is not a top-speed car for sure. Now I want to go up there. And I could drive around, or I could just be lazy and say, boom, we're here. We're on the spot I wanted to be. Well, little wrecked up. I actually got myself stuck right there. So quick 180, and we're going to see what kind of top speed we get. I would think it's about 120 miles per hour. I don't think it'll be much more than that, though. So 65 miles per hour is where we get into third gear. And it looks like fourth gear is going to be about 85. And fourth gear, I would guess maybe it tops out at 115 then, just because it has to end on a 5 like the other ones, or at least close to a 5. Oh, we're, no, we're going to get up to like 120. Yeah, so right about 120 is where it tops out. Right where I guessed the first time. Shouldn't have changed my guess. So what does it look like when you do a 120 mile per hour crash? Well, you got to wait until we find a good thing to crash into. There's nothing to hit right now. All right, there's something to crash into. This time we'll get 16 times slow-mo on this. And we get to watch it go smash. Really wrapping around that pole. Unfortunately, the camera freaked out a little bit and didn't get the greatest show there for you. But you do get to see the outcome at least which absolutely destroyed this thing. I don't think it can put down power anymore. No, it cannot. And I like that it's jiggling somehow. I don't know exactly what's causing that, but yeah, we're just going to rock back and forth for no real reason whatsoever. That would be a fatal crash for sure, though. That whole cabin where the drivers would be is just absolutely mangled. Anyways, let's finish this up. We're going to start with a brutal slope, and then we'll go to a leap of death. Uh, with this car having such a low top speed, I know the engine is going to blow up here when we run down a brutal slope. It's just a matter of how long can it last. So we'll go with the Road Sport for crashing because the Road Sport has the most stuff. It's got all the chrome. It's got the fancy air cleaner. And I always want to call it an air filter. But if you look at the parts menu, it says air cleaner. So we're calling it an air cleaner. I don't know if there's even a difference. I've never heard of the words air cleaner used on a car before. Top speed is reached. And now we over rev the engine and it'll blow up any second now. Valve train damaged. Boom, there it goes. Now we're just coasting all the way down. Gonna get a little bit over 200 miles per hour still though. And then we hit the slow-mo all the way. Get the camera off because the camera likes to freak out. And there goes the whole front of the car and most of the rear. We got just the trunk left. And even it is a little bit damaged, but not that bad, actually. Like, the trunk is still clearly intact.
That's surprising. I guess because it's such a long vehicle, that probably helps out a little bit. Now, on to Leap of Death. And we got to make sure we go to the top. And I don't think this thing's going to fly very far at Leap of Death. A lot of vehicles you can tell. Just like, is it going to fly far or not? This one, it can't get traction on regular roads. So it's not going to get very much traction in the dirt. And it's long and pretty heavy. So look at this. When we hit the end of the jump, we're going to be going just under 60 miles per hour. Maybe even closer to 50 miles per hour. So yeah, this is going to be one of those long, bouncy leap of deaths. If we can even make it to the bottom. We'll do a slow-mo on this first crash. All the slow-mo. Hopefully the camera doesn't freak out too bad because I'm not doing a manual camera position. It jumped a little bit, but this still is able to keep the impact in view, which is what is important. And then how far can we go after that? It looks like we could almost get stuck right there if we got unlucky. Thankfully, we did not get unlucky and we can keep falling. Maybe all the way. It's very, very possible. It's got that nice little spiral wheel motion going. It helps it bounce better, it seems like, a lot of the time. Although it didn't right there. It lost the nice wheel motion. There it goes. It got a rotation again. Like, it just seems like whenever a vehicle's rotating, it's able to get down more. Where if they're kind of stationary as they fly, they're more likely to get stuck. So there we go. We're going to make it all the way? No, we are not. We're going to get stuck right here. That is the closest I have ever been to the water, I think, without actually going into the water. We're just... A single fall away from going into the water no matter what, but we didn't end up making it there. Right, I feel like doing one more thing with this. How about we go and make our way over to Car Jump Arena? And the funny thing is, there's the possibility of over revving the engine here as well since it tops out at such a low speed. Once again, we're going to go with the Road Sport version for this, and we'll see how fast it'll go. Like, I'm pretty sure it'll go over its normal top speed. The question is just, by how much? Slowing it down just a bit right there. That was like the perfect amount. So we are now over the top speed and we are still pulling, but we're not going to be pulling enough to break the engine in this amount of time. We're going to go about 135. I'm trying to rev the engine up to get it to level out some and that went pretty level. It's a nice clean landing, although it's over revving now. Like if you were to do a couple more of those, I'm sure it eventually would over rev the engine. Just didn't happen there. Uh oh, can we get out of the water before it drowns? Nope, it's dead. Well, I bet I could have if I just didn't rev the engine so high, but I freaked out, so I just revved it super high. Anyways, that'll do it for this video. Till next time, this is YBR. I'll see ya.